Okay, so I want to spend just a little time talking about the philosophy of the comparative pathology class because I really love this class. Um, it's one that's really grown on me over the years. Uh, this is a critical thinking class, um, and that should be something that causes some excitement because what we're doing is we're applying what we've learned about x-ray procedures to a wide variety of different imaging formats. So we're going to be looking at how pathology looks on, for example, like up here, uh, like an AP uh, knee x-ray, looking at that on an MRI, looking at that with ultrasound, post-operative images, um, all, all in the service of better understanding what is quality imaging, what is quality patient care. So I want to spend just a little bit of time, very quickly, talking to you about the philosophy of this class and, um, and also looking at um, what can we expect in a lot of the activities in this class. So um, already in the activity um, I just posted today, there's an expectation that we'll understand what a differential diagnosis is. And so that's going to be one of the key concepts for this class is understanding what a normal anatomy is versus a differential diagnosis. And there's going to be kind of a this versus that way of thinking about this stuff. So just general outline, we're going to move through this stuff real quickly. We're going to, we're going to just look at the chest x-ray. We're going to talk about what the anatomy is, how we image it for x-ray, um, how we evaluate what we've imaged and uh, diagnostically, and then um, why we would do comparative analysis as well for differential diagnosis. So just a normal anatomy, all of this may be pretty obvious to you, but we have a lot of bony anatomy in the chest. Um, so all the ribs, sternum, manubrium, um, of course, the thoracic spine as well. And there can be uh, anatomic variants, like we've looked at uh, cervical ribs and, and, and things of that nature. Um, additionally, you know, and so that's what primarily shows up on our chest x-ray images will be this bony anatomy, but we also know that we're able to see soft tissue anatomy like the lungs, uh, the mediastinum, et cetera, et cetera. So that's normal anatomy, and being able to identify it on an x-ray image is very, very helpful. So when we do uh, an x-ray image of, a, of the chest, like a PA chest x-ray like here, we're able to go through that and identify that uh, bony anatomy and determine whether or not we took a good PA x-ray image. And that's the, that kind of, this is the kind of the building blocks that we're building on. So first off, you had anatomy classes here at the college as well as some pathology classes. Then you started getting into the chest x-ray imaging class, and we, we talked about how to position the patient for chest, chest x-ray imaging. And this class is kind of designed to look at the next step in the process. So we will be thinking about this. This is all in the back of our mind, but where we're going to be focusing quite a bit is in the area of diagnostic evaluation. And you may be wondering, well, I'm not a doctor. Why do I need to diagnostically evaluate these images? You've told me not to do that. When the truth is, is I haven't said don't diagnostically evaluate the images. What we've what we've said over and over and over again is we cannot talk about diagnosis with the patient. That's just simply not our role. It's a question of role. But in terms of better knowing how to do what you do, I, I think about it like this. Like if I said, go out and take a picture of a camel for me, but you didn't know what a camel was, you wouldn't know whether or not you got a good picture of a camel, right? You might take a picture of something that you think is a camel and it's not a camel at all, right? Um, the same is true with our, for us as x-ray tech. So if I say go out and take a picture of a, of a patient who may have a pneumothorax, but you don't know what pneumothorax looks like, how will you know if you've got a good picture of pneumothorax? And that's why we need to do this comparative pathology work, is just to be able to say, okay, this is what the diagnosis that we're looking for is, and so I know whether or not I took a good picture of it. Does it have good contrast? Does it have good spatial resolution? All of those questions that we're asking in image production, we'll continue to ask in this class. So what's interesting, though, is if we just kind of go off the building blocks of normal anatomy, how the procedure was done, we can start to know, notice when things are abnormal. So this is a great example. I always thought pneumothorax were difficult to identify as a student until I realized that, well, it's just an irregularity in an area that I would expect to normally see a certain way. So, for example, in this chest x-ray, we have a very large pneumothorax. Um, I hope you can see my, cur my cursor, but it goes down um, the, the kind of the lateral wall of the patient's left lung, and it extends pretty much from the apices down to the costophrenic angle, right? <clears throat> and it's this area where there's just air in here. I can't see any lung markings, and in fact, it's like there's a, a, a balloon of air right in here that's compressed the lung over, and so I do see increased lung markings in here. Why? Because the lung, the let patient's left lung is actually compressed. So 
my ability to identify this is not magic or anything like that. I'm just looking again at what do I expect to see in terms of normal anatomy, the bony uh, aspects of the uh, thorax, so ribs, sternum, etc. Then I'm also looking at those soft tissue things, and I see an asymmetry between the soft tissue over here and the soft tissue over here. So that's helpful to be able to say, yes, I've got a good picture of this pneumothorax. Well, when we talk about comparative pathology, we may just ask the question, what is it? So um, it's helpful now to look at um, this CT image over here on the right. What we have in this image is also a pneumothorax. It looks very different, right? Until we start to notice some similarities, right? So I have something that looks like a balloon right here, right? It does not look like that over here. I don't have a balloon over here, so there's an asymmetry in the normal anatomy. And I see an area that has air in it, but no lung markings. Over here, what do I see? Kind of compressed looking lung markings, right? And what's interesting too, if I notice here, this is the patient's hand resting on their chest. So as I'm looking at this diagnostically, I can also be thinking critically, was this CT done well? And the answer is not really. They could have done things like raise the patient's arm in order to decrease artifacts that we see coming off of the bony anatomy of the patient's arm. So what we're looking at is we're evaluating the presence of disease and the way it presents in various imaging modalities, CT, ultrasound, MRI. And they may be asking, well, why would I want to do that? I just want to be an x-ray tech. And that's fine. Um, but this will definitely test our understanding of anatomy and pathology and physiology and all of those things that we need to know. Um, and it could also potentially optimize image quality. So if I know that I'm, what I'm looking for is, an, is a pneumothorax and that that is a subtractive pathology, I may need to change my technique accordingly or do additional imaging. So it lets me know, is this something I need to communicate with the physician about in order to acquire additional images in order to guide diagnosis? So one of the key steps to all of this is what we call a differential diagnosis. And this is a this versus that way of thinking. Um, this is what I expected, that's what I got. This is how normal anatomy looks, that's abnormal ad anatomy. And we call this a differential -like diagnosis. We can also say, well, are we sure that this is a pneumothorax and not something else, right? So that's the normal way that physicians are thinking about differential diagnosis. Or is this the right way of looking at this potential um, pneumothorax, or is there some other way of looking at it? So when you see the term differential diagnosis, don't be scared. It's already in the activity that I've planned for you today. And you'll be looking at all sorts of things that actually share borders with our roles as technologists. So I want to point that out here. Um, when we look at the CT image of a pneumothorax, one of the first things that we're questioning in terms of differential diagnosis is solidly within the role of the technologist. Artifacts, right? Air caught between structures outside the chest. Could it be a skin fold? Could it be clothing? Could it be blankets? All of these things are patient care considerations that we make in the course of doing our procedures, right? Monitoring leads overlap of breast margin. Um, so as we diagnose, um, as we work along with the physician to enhance diagnosis, we can be thinking about these differential diagnoses that may actually have some overlap with our work as technologists. Well, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, I uh, have enjoy again teaching this class and I look forward to your comments and your response to the activity today.